Text-to-speech is the future, particularly for those who really, truly cannot be bothered to go down and get their microphones to record these pre-podcast messages. If I, the creator of this show, cannot be bothered to do the minimal amount of effort to get this done professionally. I truly have no idea why I would expect others to do the effort of subscribing to my Patreon, and yet here we are. Subscribe at patreon.com slash matthewdonald for bonus content every month where we talk about pop culture featuring prehistoric animals. This month we will have two bonus episodes, that's right, two. One about the Valley of Guanji, a classic stop-motion extravaganza featuring dinosaurs and cowboys, and the video game Ratchet and Clank. Tools of Destruction, which has a level with alien dinosaurs in it, which is pretty neat I reckon. The reason there's two this month is not because I was feeling generous, but because I couldn't release last month's in time. I'm truly a professional. Link is in the description for where you can sign up. Why do I do this? Roar. Growl. Snarl. Bellow. Welcome to Paleobites, the podcast as alluring as the Solarians. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Matthew Dahl, and each week I and a rotating series of guests co hosts talk about and rate a genus of prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This week I'm joined by someone who's just as alluring. <laughs> uh, well, Look at that. Well, look, uh, <laughs> I'm only joking about this because you're a good friend of mine. Look at that eye. Look how alluring you are. Oh, it's Stephen Curl. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I apologize about your lazy eye. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, but it's, I only, I only joke about that because I'm a good, you know, we're good friends. So. Of course, of course. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, but you're good. No, you're, you're, everything's good. Everything's cool. And, yeah, everything's fine. Yeah, Just, I mean, uh, Hanging around, enjoying the summer. Yep, enjoying the summer as much as we can with all this rain, man. Damn. This is the wettest June that I have ever remembered. If April showers bring May flowers. What the hell do June showers bring? Uh, July flowers. July, right yeah. August flowers. It's, oh, August. man, it's so green out, though. Like, it is... Uh, oh, I'm if you look it. at, like... If you ever drive on the toll road leading to the airport, usually it's all, like, yellow and, like, Great Plains-y. But now it looks like the Irish Hills. It's <laughs> glorious. <laughs> It yeah, was so. actually chilly last night. Chilly in I, June in I know, Colorado. I know. That doesn't happen. Yeah, it's I mean, super maybe. El Nino that's going on. <laughs> I don't know if that means we're going to have a really, really blizzardy winter or a really, really dry winter. I'm not really looking forward to either one. <laughs> uh, if I had to pick, I would say blizzardy, even though I hate the cold. But um, we need the snow. We so, do need, well, I don't know if we do yeah. now, after all this. Well, I mean... <laughs> You know, if we could get some wiggle room just to kill those pine beetles and oh, fill that's up true the too. snowpack. Well, and all those moths that have come up now, thanks to uh, all the uh, wetness now. Is that why we have so many moths? Yeah, it's because of that. <laughs> it's because of the Super El Nino. Yeah, they all, they, all, they all wrote in on that. And here they are. So, all right. Well, uh, if you... Okay, so that's why I'll ask for the Dash Relay question. If you could... Um, if due to this wetness of this summer, a certain dinosaur moved into town and into the ecosystem, which one would you want it to be? <laughs> would I you would... want to cause absolute chaos or do you want it to be like, oh, that's kind of neat. Look at this little guy. <laughs> I would want it to be one of those uh, particularly big grazing sauropods. There was one, I forget what its name is. It begins with an R. Um, Rapidosaurus. Y- yes, I think that's right. Like, I wanted to mow the lawn for me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know if they would have done that. I don't know if they would have eaten grass. I I don't know. They could have trimmed your, your bushes, though. They could do that. Like Maybe The could... bushes do need trimming as well. Yeah. The Maybe lawn. they could flatten your lawn. <laughs> would... Okay, you know that. I mean, <laughs> I don't do it. I'm just morally opposed to mowing the lawn. So have a dinosaur naturally eat it. And then yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. I get that. My, uh, my parents are, too. That's why the, our gardens are purely wildflowers right now. And oh, that's like, awesome. I need to show you. Because I, I don't think you've been to our, my backyard since I've... I've never been to your house. Oh, you never have? No. Oh, well, my, we used to have a, just a big lawn, and now it's all either like flower beds or like there's this open sort of area where their pathways are and it's all wildflowers I'm trying to get my parents to do that to our house mm-hmm. for years and eventually it is mowed away it is mowed once a year just to keep it from getting too crazy it's mowed in the fall i think my dad mows it all once and I kind of get that. So I guess that makes more sense. But... Yeah, but like it's better than having to mow twice a week like I mean... we did before. <sighs> uh, 
he used to mow my neighbor's lawn for I mean, money. You're taking, you're cutting up grass for bio, to, which hurts biodiversity. You're wreaking havoc with insects. You're also it's not fuel. even it's, it's not even real grass. I mean, it is real grass. But it's like it's not natural grass at all. It's no. very per, it's per a monoculture. Rated. Yeah, like suburbia. <laughs> yes, classic suburbia. It's so. not. There's nothing natural about living on a mini golf course. No, no. Do you ever see Over the Hedge? Yeah, I love if you as a kid, it's irritating enough. As an adult, it's so funny how satirical that movie is about modern suburbia culture. Oh yeah, they go after. <laughs> it's a, like that a homeowner, lot of stuff. that that lady who's the head of the homeowners association is like, you know, you know, I've heard that like they're supposed to be like a t- a two inch you know grass height, and yours is clearly two point oh one. We're going to cut you off, <laughs> uh, and you better pay up, or we'll or we'll take you out of the homeowners association. Well, I feel like we have. We have a homeowner association like that in our neighborhood because we try – like I wanted to put in one of those little mini neighborhood book things mm-hmm. where you pr- take free books. And my dad's like, no, we got to get that approved. I'm like, why do we have to get that approved? Do we put it in front of our own house? This is ridiculous. Yeah, we own this land. Right. <laughs> uh, now, I mean, I mean look, I, I get certain things. Like if you if you want to paint the outside of your house bright neon pink. Obviously, that should be approved first by the homeowner association because otherwise, that'd be an eyesore in the neighborhood. Sure, eyesore. I, I know, care. but like everyone else has house. to deal with it. I, I get, I get, I, <laughs> I get both sides in that argument. But when something little, like a yeah, like a book, that's fine. Who cares? Right. It's just, like, am I living in a fascist state? It's books. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to spread knowledge. <laughs> knowledge, like. Antarctic dinosaurs, and mm. speaking of which, exactly, we're talking about Cryolophosaurus, which means the cold crested lizard the type. is a neotheropod, a clay to theropod dinosaurs that include all of them except for the earliest ones. We can't get clearer than that, but it's close to the Dilophosaurus, or at least just as homeless on the taxonomic family tree. Mm. Uh, so, size it's about the same size as Dilophosaurus 20 to 23 feet, so six to seven meters long. 772 to 1,025 pounds, 350 to 465 kilograms. It was a carnivore. Of course. Uh, lived in the early Jurassic, 186 to 182 million years ago. Mm. Uh, it was described in 1994. Oh, wait, sorry. I forgot the most. I, I can't believe I forgot this one. This is the most notable thing about it. Location, Antarctica. Yes. <laughs> no joke. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you with that pun? <laughs> I know. Don't be so cold, man. Uh, chill oh, out. <laughs> Though it wasn't so chilly for this dinosaur back then. No, I mean, yeah, no, no, it wasn't. Like even in the seasonally, winter, like it was seasonally, maybe, but like, but like, well, not even like because like Jurassic, probably not. It was very warm in the Jurassic Cretaceous. It started to get cold there in the winter, but like, right, right. I think in Jurassic, I mean, it was still probably a little colder than it was in the tropics. But like, I just think it's fascinating that this land that we think of as a cold, icy desert was yeah. once a lush tropical. Oh, well, for sure, land. It All was right. described in 1994. Pop culture appearances: Dinosaur Revolution, Dinosaur Train, Dinosaur King. The video games Primal Carnage, Warpath, Jurassic Park, and Jurassic Park Evolution 2, and Diotopia, The World Beneath, as yes. you have said. And also, another thing I thought about, it is technically mentioned, but not quite really, in the Rick and Morty episode about dinosaurs that they did. Uh, oh, they, they reference it. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a song. Uh, what, did you see the Rick and Morty episode? Did you watch Rick and Morty at all? I've seen snippets of it. I haven't really, actually. Uh, it's, it's, it's hit and miss. Sometimes it's very, very funny. Sometimes it's a bit too far. Mm. But, like, it's always incredibly creative and incredibly, like, it's your mind sort of thinking about things. Like, there's an episode about dinosaurs where dinosaurs come to Earth because they've been a spacefaring civilization. <laughs> and they are objectively better than humans in every way. Of course <laughs> to the point they are. where they take over, but it's for the betterment of humans. And mm-hmm. like human and some Rick is uh, hates this because he's like this angry old scientist who always thinks he's he's a huge god complex. He's like, why are you guys so perfect? <laughs> <laughs> and, but like they take over society in kind of a dictatorship sort of ish way, but Everything's better. Everyone has health care. Everyone has like, a, oh, okay. everyone has well off money wise. They can do whatever they want. Benevolent you know? dictatorship. Benevolent dictatorship. But there's this song that they say that, that there's like in the background one that shows them taking over everything. And it's just a bunch of dinosaur names. And it's like, these are all real dinosaurs. You know, they're not all real dinosaurs because like one of the ones they say is Elvisaurus. There is no Elvisaurus. But that's the nickname of Cryolophosaurus. Wow. Because of the, uh, 
of the crest on its head. You gotta give them credit for being that obscure. <laughs> well, the, they mentioned Bambi Raptor in that song. They mentioned Soraniops, uh, Draco Rex Hogwartsia. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of ones they mentioned uh, that were like, these are all real dinosaurs. I'm going to have to find that episode. That's well, it's really funny because what it turns out is Rick is trying to get in the bottom of this and be like, what happened? You know, he he, to... He's mad that they've taken over and everything's better. He <laughs> wants to discredit them. <laughs> yes, exactly. So he look, he goes around the universe because he says there are space traveling species and he sees these other planets where they've they've gone on and there's aliens there and they have dinosaur bones on there too and it's funny because like every planet he goes that they arrange the dinosaur bones in different ways <laughs> it's like do we think oh, they yeah. skateboarded like this <laughs> <laughs> or we think they use their teeth to like eat cliffs or whatever <laughs> but he knows that every planet that they're on there's a big crater oh. and it's because the dinosaurs in this universe are so perfect that to counter them, the universe creates this race of asteroid creatures that just constantly go, ah! <laughs> like, you see, they have a face, and there's going, ah! <laughs> just full of pure rage to just wipe them out. So the me- meteor that killed the dinosaurs is, is from this race of asteroid creatures that's going to the earth going, ah! <laughs> and, it's just, and so, and then since they've taken over, there's going to be another one coming in. And oh, so, no. <laughs> That's very entertaining. It's so funny. <laughs> it's so bizarre. Oh, the show as a whole is I very have, bizarre. I have but... to watch that show. Oh my god! It's like that. Anyways, Cryolophosaurus. Cryolophosaurus. So, what was the nickname? The, 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 the... Elvisaurus. Elvisaurus. Gotcha. Yeah, because it has this very unique crest on its head. It does kind of look like an L, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. Well, an Elvis, like Elvis. like the singer. Oh. Like that's his, what they were going for. Yeah, because like the hair that he had. The hair that was kind of sticking up. Yeah, that's the, hair often like a weird question mark like isn't that. Isn't the crest more in the back? Because I thought like the... It is in the back too. But I thought like, his hair was more in the, the front. I guess it is. You know what? They're working uh, with uh, that Whatever. No. <laughs> yeah, like apparently... Yeah, so some, I think we... Uh, it's sometimes nicknamed Elvisaurus. But like it's it's very notable. I'm fairly certain, like I say, it was found on the mountain of Mount Kirkpatrick in the Beardmore Glacier region. I'm trying to figure out like, did they find it on purpose? That's what I'm almost wondering. That's a good question. Because, like, the fossils were found in the Silcius siltstone of the Hansen Formation. But, like, were they going there to find it is what I'm wondering. Because, like, Mm. it looks like they were, which good on them. Because I always thought they found it by accident because, like, you wouldn't expect it to be there. I bet the first fossils were found by accidents. But maybe this was from an an expedition where they specifically went to get more. Right. And and this is the, uh, the the first one named from Antarctica. It's not the first one discovered. There's glacial, glacial source, I think is another one where it's Mm -hmm. like, and it lived at the same time in too, like early Jurassic. It's like a nautosaurid. Oh, it was the second dinosaur and first therefore discovered in Antarctica. Antarctica Pelta is sometimes found in Antarctica too. Well, Antarctica, I'm confused on the Antarctosaurus, which is uh, South America. Antarctica Pelta (laughs) is, um, a genus of ankylosaur dinosaur that from the Lake Cretaceous in Antarctica. Did they finally name? I read in a book somewhere a long time ago that they had found um, several dinosaurs, including uh, unnamed ankylosaurs. Maybe they finally named it. Possibly. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> That'd be cool. Uh, I I've always thought one thing that like must be in Antarctica is uh, long necks, like titanosaurs. And the reason why I know there has to be the, them there. It's because there are some in South America and in Australia. And what was connecting the two of them back then? All uh, right. <laughs> so, so, of course, at some point there were sort of pods. There should, there's probably were. Sort yeah. Of pods. That's one good thing about the uh, ice melting. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to discover dinosaurs. If there's only, I mean, if, sure, the if, ecosystem will be fricked, but. <laughs> if there's one silver lining, <laughs> to we'll get to see change. a lot of cool new dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, it's just amazing to think about. I wish I knew more. There, there, there's. Well, it the, seems to me this is the only Jurassic Antarctic dinosaur we know of, though. But I don't think that's true. I think there's like glacial. I mean, like, what else is in that formation? Because like all the other Antarctic dinosaurs I know are from the Cretaceous. The problem is they're so far until climate change has its way. Yeah. There are like literally two weeks out of the year that you can go digging something, right, something right. Outrageous like that. So otherwise, it gets too cold. Right, the handsome formation. The way you so, can tell this is you look at the formations. The formations are from that certain time area, and so yeah, the Hansen Formation in Antarctica. What other creatures are in here? Uh, fungi, synapsid. Okay, there's a, a synapsid like Trilsleodon of a cynodont. A cynodont. Oh, yeah. nice. Oh, there's a there's a unknown species of Dimorphodon or Dimorphodon like mm, pterosaur. 
Excellent, uh, excellent. Uh, Eo Cursor. Eo Cursor. Um, oh, also lived in South Africa, too. I know Muttabuttasaurus was found in Australia, mm-hmm. but back then they were connected. So. Yes, yes. Glacial Saurus. Yep, that's Antarctica. And then, of course, there's Australia Venator. Yes, Australia Venator, which is from Australia, too, and, but also from Antarctica, too. But, like, yeah, like, I, how many other creatures it lived with in that formation? And there seemed to be quite a few, so. Quite a few. Yeah. It was definitely a, a, a wide-ranging ecosystem. We oh, just yeah, need for to sure. Dig it up. Amazing to think about. I don't know if back then it was as south as it is now, though, too, to be fair. Not perfectly as south, but. And, like, some of those creatures were also, as we saw in South Africa and stuff. Like, and back in the early Jurassic, which is right when Pangaea is still starting to break apart, obviously a lot of those areas would be connected, so. Which makes sense. I wonder if Crylophosaurus ever went up there. Maybe we'll, <laughs> that'd be interesting if we found some specimens in South Africa. Right. Find a cry- cryophilosaurid of some sort. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a mouthful. Cryolophosaurid, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's just amazing. It's it's just shows just how widespread dinosaurs were. And what's more from how far back, like how widespread they were at that early in, at a point. Mm. The fact that they evolved when Pangaea was a thing, I guess, gave them an edge. Well, they they appeared 220-ish million years ago. Yeah. And then by the time Jurassic shows up, we're talking, depending on when, what, 150, mm-hmm. 170 million? So that's like a good, what, 30, 40, 50 right. million years to spread and diversify. So it's, it's crazy, for sure. Also, what I find interesting about there are certain types of dinosaurs that are spread across all the continents or most of the continents, but were from far later than that. So they must have had earlier answers. Like the dromaeosaurs, we have at least one species on every continent. Mm. Very successful critter. And like, but like they were Cretaceous. So how? <laughs> like, well, I mean, unless they had a Jurassic ancestor, which I've mentioned in the show before, that a lot of, we're starting to think there might have been a Jurassic dromaeosaur. That's that like so cool. That like we just haven't discovered yet because it fills in the gaps that we that, like. That would explain. There, we have found Jurassic Truodontids. I mean, so. it's possible that there was a land bridge of some sort that. Oh yeah. We just haven't accounted for. It's also possible they have documented that um, occasionally life rafts of vegetation yes. get washed into the ocean and like mm-hmm. you know primates. That's how mm-hmm. that's how they think certain primates wound up in. Uh, South America. That's true. So like, maybe the same thing happened to a really teeny raptor that then <laughs> evolved into a big raptor. That's true. Possibly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, it makes it because like a lot of the bigger ones, we only have a few of range of them in the lower continents, but a lot of the big ones we have are in North America, Europe, and and Asia. Mm-hmm. So, because in Europe, we got like Pyroraptor and Variraptor, and then Asia, of course, we have Velociraptor and and uh, some others that I can't think of. <laughs> Sagan, <laughs> the one that... Sagan. T-S-A-A-G-A-N. Huh. It means white monster. White monster? Yeah. Was it found like in white rock? No, it was in Mongolia. I think they were using it to describe the, the paleontologist. <laughs> just, just, no, actually, I think it was Mongolian paleontologist. So. <laughs> so, <laughs> was, it, was he a scientist? Carl Sagan? No. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's a good one. I like <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Yeah, no, Crylophosaurus is pretty cool, wouldn't you say? But uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so. and he has like a weird little crest. Like, oh, oh, what? I guess we didn't what really talk about the is, crest. What do you? It's in the name. We it has to be for it. display. There's no way that thing but is a it's weapon. So- Teeny. I know it's not a weapon, but it's like And there's you know, also no way that like it could really use to regulate anything. I like, mean Dilophosaurus's crest. It's this big, it's yeah. it's it takes up most of the head. The Carlophosaurus, it's a like dinky little yeah. knobby bone thing. It's like I almost why? wonder if we haven't found well all of it. Could be. It's I mean like as the like, paleontologist would be able to guess if it was broken off or that's not. That's true. But. Well there's some animals that like I look at and like sort of like the whole shrink wrap thing, and I looked at how we interpret them. And I'm like, there's no way in hell we think it actually looked like that, right? <laughs> like some of those mammals, like the ones with like the bones coming out of their cheeks, like the like the pigs. Oh yeah, no. There's no way in hell those are actually vi- as visible as people often depict them in Pro- real life. Possibly, but probably not. Yeah, like like we yeah. all we've all seen what a hippo ske- skull looks like versus mm-hmm. the actual animal. All right, let's rate Cryolophosaurus one out of sixty five million. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna rate it like uh sixty two million. I think mm-hmm. it only loses points now. It's a little bit lightly built for me. Like it's not as robust as some of the other ones. Like, it's no Allosaurus even. I will give it sixty one million five hundred thousand. Whoa, super cool. I mean, you know, <laughs> he's he's a little. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, no pun intended, time. but I guess it fits. Um, I'm just fascinated by Antarctic dinosaurs. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I want them to find that Antarctic Titanosaur. And Hurry who? up. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I'm going to rate 61 million. 62 million. You said 61.5 million. Yes. So, that's, yeah, it's pretty good stuff. All right. Well, that's it for this week. You're going to get a hold of the show and contact me at Matt at methanolcreator.com for your general questions. Sitting the co host. Also on at Paleobites Podcast at gmail.com. You can find me at also at Paleobites Pod on Twitter and Paleobites Podcast on Instagram or Matthew Dolan 64 on those places. Oh, I think that's all my stuff. Other than Megazorp, I'll get to that. What, what, where, where can I find you? You can find me at S-T-E-P-H-E-N-C-C-U-R-R-O.com, stephencurro.com. Yes. Uh, you can find the list of all of my uh, my uh, published work so far and a lot of good other stuff. shenanigans. Thank you, thank you. you yes, know. of course. Very good stuff. Short stories. I have a, di- a novel that involves dinosaurs that will come out eventually. Yeah. We will see. We will <laughs> see. It will come out. Mark yeah. my words. One way or another. <laughs> yes. I have a novel about dinosaurs. It's called Megazog. It's a four-book series, and there is a Krylophosaurus, and she's one of the champions of the conglomerates. Huzzah! Yes, her name is Zevian. She fulfills the last... I think she was. I named her that so that way I could have a character beginning with every letter of the alphabet for uh <laughs> for in that series and i got it with her i think she was the last letter i needed filling that's just a cool goal to do I should, yeah maybe I should try that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so and yeah and also i made it so that she has her armor incorporates her crests where it kind of like goes up like this like mm-hmm. so like a roman sort of thing but More it's just pronounced crest and then also her her uh Blades are like crest shaped too. They're crescent blades. Excellent. So it's like it's very part of her design. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. But I'm gonna <laughs> keep that every time with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well that's it for this week. I'll say the end of every episode of Paleo Bites. Oh well. But I'm cool. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold, man. <laughs>